Hi, in this video I'm going to unbox and show you the settings and then give you my review of the LCD digital table temperature sensor light up clock. This model happens to be the DS8082. In the box we'll get the clock stand, the clock and the little leaflet. Right, to get started you'll need to insert two AA batteries into the back which I've already done. The stand has to be inserted into here to hold up so what you do is you put it in there and then you press. Now it's inserted. All right, just to show you the physical dimensions and mass, you can see it's 166 grams with the batteries included. The width is 14.5 centimeters. The digit size is just about 45 millimeters, so 4.5 centimeters. Right, and the height that it's going to stand off your desk, you're looking at just under 11 centimeters. As you can see, the clock is very narrow. Right, that's what the clock looks like when it's on your desk. I'm now going to go through the buttons and how to set it up, and then I'll quickly give you my opinion on this clock. Right, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to set up this clock. Now, you'll see you've got a couple of modes. You've got three modes to be exact. Now, there we go. I press mode once, and you can see that it shows the clock face. This is your clock mode. This is the mode you'll probably use the most. If I press it again, it's the alarm mode. If I press it again, it's your world time mode. You may have noticed that a city appeared there. See, I can scroll through and you're seeing changes there and changes there. Right, I'll get into that shortly. Let's set up the clock in terms of the time of day and the date. Right, so in this mode, I press set and can you see that the hour is now flashing. Now, something I'd like to bring to attention, do you see it says 3 p.m.? If I want to exit that, now I've exited the settings, and I press the 12, 24 hour button, can you see that you have the option of the military time, you know, the uh, 1800, 1600, whatever, versus the regular AM, PM time. So you can decide what you want to use using this button. So I'm gonna put it on the regular time and I'm gonna set the time now. I press set and then you can see that it is flashing. Now I can go down using the arrow down button there or I can go up using the arrow up button there. If I press and hold the arrow down button, it will go Foster, as you can see, it will scroll through Foster. Now, currently it is 11.25 here, so I'm going to set the time correctly. And if I press again, can you see it brings me to the year 2020. Now, if you set the year, as I've done, and you set the month, as I've done, and you set the date in the month, it will automatically know the day is a Saturday. So it has a built-in calendar. You do not have to set the date. It knows that on the 13th of June 2020, it happened to be a Saturday. So if you press set again, it'll just take you to the language. Now you can see there's a few languages there. Right, and if I press set again, I've now completed my settings for the clock. And at the bottom right, you can see it's giving you the temperature of the outside air. So at the moment, it's 14 degrees centigrade. If you would like to change that to Fahrenheit, you just press that button over there. So that all of that is now working. Now let's go to the next menu. You can see that the alarm bell has shown itself there. And now when we press set, we are changing the settings to do with the alarm. So if I press set, First thing it's asking me, what time do I want my alarm? So I'm going to leave it at 11. Then the minutes, easy. Just change them now. So I'm going to put it at 20. Let's make it 30. So if I press it again, you're going to see the number 6 flash. And that happens to be the melody number which I've chosen. There are 8 melodies available to you on this alarm clock. Now this is the sound it's going to make when the alarm activates. So I'm going to play you the 8 melody options. Right, so the first thing you may have noticed is these melodies are not very loud. If you're somebody who's a deep sleeper, you might find these melodies to be too soft. All right, so moving on. So I'm going to just choose number one as the melody, and that is set. At half past 11, the alarm should go off. But one more thing, you need to tell the unit that it must activate the alarm. So what I do is I press the 12, 24 hour button, and can you see that that little icon has come up telling me that the alarm is now on, and if I press that one, so I press this button again, you can see that the snooze function has also been activated. Now at the back you will see there's a button which is both the snooze and light button, so if I press it you can see there are four LED backlights coming on here, four LEDs, blue LEDs, there they are. So what happens now is 
if you have just the screen like that, no alarm will be on. If I have it like that, the alarm will be activated, but it'll only go once. If I press it like that, it'll allow for the snooze function. When the alarm goes off, if you want to snooze, you press the snooze button at the back, then it'll wait a few minutes, then the alarm will go on again. And then if you want to snooze again, you press the snooze button. And I think you can do that up to three times until the alarm is canceled. Right, so now we're going to wait till the alarm goes off. I'm going to put it back in the normal mode. There you can showing me that the snooze and the alarm is on. And at 30 minutes past 11, the alarm should go off. Right, if I press the snooze button at the back, what will happen is it'll wait a few minutes and then the alarm will activate again. What you will notice is that the volume of the alarm did not change. It didn't start soft and then go loud. It just was one volume all in all. Right, now just something you need to be aware of. When you set the clock, you can see it's set to 11.35. But if you go to the world time zone, you'll see that it says 11.35 and it says Moscow is 7.35. Now, if I press set, it will take the time as the time in Moscow. So if I press set, you can see what's happened now. It's actually used the time that's sitting there, Moscow, as now my time zone. So you can see that is incorrect. So what I'd have to do is go and find my city. Right, so I find my city, which would be in the time zone of Cairo. So if I find Cairo, there we go, Cairo. Now I'm in Johannesburg, which is the same time zone as Cairo. I say set. To Cairo now what I do is I need to go to my time here and then set it again right set now I can go back to the time zone you can see Cairo 1136 so you must see that these two menus are actually linked to each other and if you want to see the time in a different city for example say you want to see the time in Bangkok it is now 436 in Bangkok while here in Johannesburg is 1136 but if I press the set button it then changes my current time zone of Cairo or Johannesburg so if I press the set button, what it's going to do is it's now going to think I'm in Bangkok and it's going to take that as my time zone. So all of the other cities will be with reference to the one that I press set to. So I'm not going to press set there because as you can see, if I go back to Cairo, you can see that is my time, 1137. So if I press set now, it's not going to have any effect. So it's very important because if you do do that, say it's on Moscow and you press set, look what's happened. It says 12 and I want to go back to the mode. Look, it's taken that as my new time. So just be aware that these two menus are interrelated. Right, now there's one additional feature I'd like to show you and that is the timer. If I press the timer button, you can see that it takes me to a new menu. And in this menu, you have a countdown timer. If I press the set button, it takes you to this digit, which is the hour. So if you want to have it count down in hours from 23 hours, then if I press set again, you now have minutes. So if you want to count down 59 minutes, and if you press it again, it is the seconds. So if you want to count down 59 seconds, for example, there we go. Now it is set to count down 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds. If I press the timer button, it activates the timer to start counting down. When it reaches the end, or the 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 52, 51, once it's finished that countdown, it will play the melody which you had set in the alarm menu. So whichever melody you set is the one that it will use. So now let me just demonstrate that to you. I'm going to say timer to stop it, timer to get it going again, timer to stop it, timer to get it going again, right, so I'm going to stop it, set, and I'm now going to just set it for about three seconds, right, so now it's set, and I press uh, start, and there you can see, right, so there you can see the timer, and you can exit the menu if you want to by pressing the mode button, so now you're back to your clock face. Now something you'll notice is this has the ability to have an automatic backlight. Now at the back there's a button to activate that. Right, so there you can see it's off, on. So while it's off, if you want the backlight to come on, you've got to press the snooze button at the back. There you can see backlight comes on. Right, now the LED backlight is off. If I tap the unit, you can see nothing is going to happen. Now if I tap the switch on, which allows the backlight to come on when it is touched or bumped, then you will see that it will come on. It's already coming on. Right, it is off and I'm not going to bump it. You can see it comes on. It's very sensitive. You basically just need to put your finger on the unit. As you can see, this finger, I'm going to just gently touch it and there you can see it, the clock light came on. Right, so what do I think of this alarm clock? Now, you might also be in the market for something that looks like this. 
and this one I've been using for years and one of the reasons why I'm not going to keep this one is because of the viewing angle. When the viewing angle changes you'll see that the clock face becomes barely readable. I know now on the camera it is showing it but when I have this next to my bed I've noticed that the LCD display does not have good viewing angles. So while it's nice and bold in the day as you can see it's not too bad. Um, you'll find that at night even with the LED light coming on it is not that easy to read. Well at least I found that. Right while I've made it darker in the room it's definitely not night time and I'll just show you what I'm talking about by the viewing angle if I switch the light on you can see that is what I'm talking about so if you are having this on your desk you have got to make sure that you are quite a bit higher than the clock otherwise you'll have that problem you can see it's barely readable so right now the camera is in the horizontal plane of both these clocks and as I say you need to have the clock lower than your bed or you must make the clock lean a bit forward you see, as I lean the clock forward, which is a bit counterintuitive because you can see that it's already leaning back. So you'll just have to adjust that. And no, you can't flip the base around. It won't fit in there if you flip it around. Right, so if I just compare it to this one, you can see that also not uh, very clear, but definitely clearer. So you see there, illegible, legible. So you can see the viewing angle is what my problem is. I still prefer this one but this one has the problem of it is not easy to set because the buttons are at the back so you've got to look at the back while you're looking at the front while this one is much easier to set the alarm and to navigate the menus so this one is much better in terms of setup but then the alarm as I said is quite soft and doesn't get louder and louder and louder while this one is better as an alarm clock all right thanks for watching cheers